Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on this Braun Multi-Serve Coffee Maker. This is a model number KF901BN. It sells for $200. Now I just bought this one used and my display is not working the best. It's got a couple digits throughout, so you may notice that during the video. But this is a really nice coffee maker. One of the things that stands out first, it does have this uh, SCA Special Coffee Maker Association sticker. That's a certified home brewer sticker. I'll go over that a little bit later, but basically passed a bunch of tests to produce a really good cup of coffee at home. And that's a really hard sticker to get. So Braun does make a really nice looking coffee maker. It's a little big, but uh, and it's only 10 cups. But it's called multi-serve because of this dial here. So you can go a full coffee pot, half, then you start getting into the um, travel mugs and then some really small coffees. It does have this nice, nice coffee cafe. And it's got this little shelf that comes down when you want to do smaller cups. That's really nice. It's got this water tank reservoir right here. It's got this lid. It does have a carbon water filter which helps with the taste of the coffee and you can replace those but it goes down there in the inlet it's got this nice carrying handle so I can carry this over fill it up in the sink and then bring it over here there's where it sits so the handle just kind of sits there and then the, the lid fits right over it and here we have the brew side it's got a brew head this is cone this is a number four cone it comes with a reusable filter. I also like to use um, paper filters, number four cone filters. So you can also use paper filters. Now you don't want to use the reusable filter and the paper filter at the same time, but the reusable filters are nice. This is a really fine screen, but you do get sediment in your coffee with this reusable filter. With a paper filter, you don't get any sediment in your coffee. I've got videos that show that. But there's what so this is the filter basket and here's we're just gonna put the the cone shaped filter in there like that it's got this really nice brew basket it's got a plunger at the bottom so that you can take the pot out but again this acts a little different so like a normal coffee maker you just pull it out and that plunger stops you got to move this lever it's called drip stop so while this thing's brewing if i want to get a cup of coffee real quick I got to make sure and put that in drip stop and then put it back to coffee. Again, this thing just looks really nice. Let's go over dimensions. So, yeah, about 12 inches side to side. Front to back, about 7 inches. So, it's only 15 inches tall without the lid. But once you move the lid up, it becomes pretty tall. So it's almost, almost 22 inches. So a standard kitchen cabinet's 19 inches, so it's not gonna fit under a standard kitchen cabinet. It's too bad, because it's a really nice coffee maker. So again, the coffee pot looks really nice. It's got this lid that lifts up. You know, there's, you're gonna have to use a brush to clean the inside. You can't get your hand in there, but you can just pop the lid off. And then it just pops back on. So it does have a warming plate. Now the warming plate keeps your coffee warm when you're brewing with the coffee pot. And it's got this little indicator light that comes on to let you know that that plate is hot. But that's only gonna come into play when you do these larger, these two sizes here, because you've, you're using the coffee pot. If you switch it to the 20 ounce travel mug, that warming plate doesn't come on because it's gonna assume that you're putting a travel mug right on there and it doesn't wanna heat the bottom of that travel mug. So that's pretty smart. And same with the rest of these. It's not going to turn that warming plate on. You know, the back of the coffee maker looks real nice. It's got these vents here. It's got about a two-foot plug. You know, two prongs. Let's move over to the control panel. So it is programmable. You can have this come on in the morning. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to program it to come on at 5 o'clock in the morning. Like I said, it's got a really nice display. My display is missing a couple digits. So it's got this. You can brew it over ice. 
Now, the, I'm going to show you in a separate video how to brew it over ice, but it basically just brews it at a lower temperature. It's got this light setting, gold and bold. Now, the gold refers to like a normal brew, which is associated with this. So they're saying in order to get this certified home brewer sticker, you, you brew it on the gold setting, and that's what they, they judged it on, is the gold. So the temperature comes into play when you, this thing has, oh, this thing is a water dispenser for tea. So that's, it's got this hot water. So coffee, drip stop, that's if you want to remove the coffee and pour yourself a cup of coffee, it'll stop the brew water from coming out. And then turn it back to coffee to continue. If you don't turn it back to coffee, it will um, stop the whole brew process. So let's talk about the hot water. This is a hot water dispenser. So, and that comes into play. You can change the temperature of the hot water that it dispenses. And what's really nice about this is it has a separate hot water um, area that comes out. So you can see the, the coffee is going to come out here. The hot water comes out here. That is really nice. And when I flip that lever over to hot water, that's what happens. And that's when I go to, to uh, drip stop. Now, the reason that hot water is really nice is because you don't get any... The water doesn't go through the coffee maker side. It, it comes out its own separate uh, nozzle. So you don't get any um, coffee taste in your hot water, which is really, really nice. You know, to me, this coffee maker just seems like it's very well made. It, and it does have some plastic, and it is mostly plastic, but you don't get the sense that it's mostly plastic. It does have some metal on it. Everything, everything just seems like it's very well made. You know, the water reservoir does have um, some markings on the side. So a full pot is 50 ounces. So according to that, so if you wanted to do a 16-ounce travel mug, just make sure you've got it at least up to the 25-ounce to do a travel mug. And it looks like 25 ounce is a half a pot. So for a half a pot, you would definitely want to make sure you have at least 25 ounces. Some other features, it does have an altitude setting. You can set what altitude you're at. And it also has, you can tell it how hard your water is because it's got this clean function. And if your clean light comes on, it's time to descale your coffee maker. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to descale this Braun coffee maker. So again, there's the carbon water filter. They recommend changing this about every couple of months. You simply just open it up. That's what these carbon water filters look like. You're gonna, when you get a new one, you're gonna wanna rinse it under water because there's some carbon dust inside here you gotta rinse off. So you either let it soak in a cup for 10 minutes or run it under water for a couple of minutes and you'll see that black uh, dust come out of here. And you just simply put it in there. And then it's you got to kind of push it down a little bit because it will float if you don't push it down all the way. And that way the water has to go through that carbon filter before it gets into the coffee maker. Okay, so I've got the water reservoir filled up. So again, I'm going to use a paper filter. You can use the reusable filter, but I just like the paper filter. It's easier to clean up and you don't get that sediment. So you just push it in there. Cone, cone, um filter baskets see how they've got kind of a narrow end here and a, and a bigger end there so that's where it goes like that you want the seam to go on the narrow but I just put it in there and then just kind of make it hug the walls and that's where we're going to put the coffee grounds it does have the indicator changes to lid so anytime the lid is open the display changes to lid that's really nice so this coffee maker does come with a scoop and they've got a ratio they want you to use. I don't have the scoop. I just got, I use tablespoons. Now for this SCA sticker, now in the manual it says in order to get that stamp of approval, you have to use a paper filter. It says they were using a paper filter, the gold setting, or the gold uh, setting here, and you have to use, so they want 16 tablespoons of coffee in here, which is a pretty strong cup of coffee. But that's how they brewed it to get that sticker. Now, normally I use one tablespoon per cup I'm going to brew. So this is a 10 cup. I would normally put 10 tablespoons in here. So 
but this the certification and it even says in the manual it was based on 16 tablespoons of coffee grounds with a paper filter using the gold not the light or the bold setting but the gold setting so that's what we're going to do we're going to put 16 tablespoons in here one two and again i'm just using normal ground coffee for a coffee maker this is ground at a medium grind so here i've got my 16 tablespoons in so i'm going to close the lid i'm going to put my dial i want a full pot and I'm gonna, I gotta turn it on first. I'm gonna turn it on. And I'm gonna select gold. Okay. So it is, that's how you start the brew process. Now this is not like a traditional coffee maker. It's not a percolator coffee maker. It's got a water pump in there. So behind here, there's a water pump and a heater. Yeah, so underneath the reservoir, there's a water pump. You don't hear the water pump. It's a really quiet coffee maker, but it heats the water and then sends it up to the brew head. Now, it is a little loud at the beginning. It, it kind of sounds like a percolator coffee maker, but it's really got a water pump in there and it really quiets down after a little bit. Now, I cannot lift this, head, this during the brew process because it'll show lid and it'll stop the brew process. Okay, so we started this at nine o'clock. There's my digit that's missing. So they pride, this thing also prides itself on being fast. It says it'll do it under a full pot of coffee under eight minutes. So we're gonna, we're gonna see if that's true. Okay, so now it's kind of settled down. You don't hear that uh, steaming water up there. And now it just sounds like a coffee maker dripping coffee. Kind of that pump's working, the water's going down. And it's a really quiet coffee maker, other than when you first start it up, it does, you, ha you hear that kind of st uh, steam coming out of the brew head. Now when this is done, we're gonna check a temperature and do a taste test. Again, I normally use one tablespoon of coffee. So say I was gonna do a half a pot, so five, I would just use five tablespoons. So that that is the thing about this, so a normal coffee maker, it brews whatever you put in the water reservoir. That's not the case here. So it, it's only going to brew what the selector you tell it to. So you only have a full pot, half a pot, and a half a pot is 25 ounces. And then it goes to 20 ounces, 50 ounces. So you do have quite a few selections there. So let's say we're in a hurry. It's got, it's got a little bit of coffee in there. And I want to get a cup of coffee while it's, while it's still brewing. I've got to go to the drip stop. So I'm going to move this to the drip stop. It stops brewing the coffee. You'll hear it do something. You can grab your quick cup of coffee, put it back. I got to remember to put this back to coffee. And then it continues brewing again. If I forget to put that back to coffee, it's going to shut the coffee maker off and stop the brew process. Because what it's doing is it stopped the water going through the coffee grounds. There's that red light to show you that that warming plate is on. So we're at the four minute mark and it looks like we're at the five cup mark. So it looks like we're on track to be eight minutes and 10 cups, which is a couple minutes faster. Um, a normal coffee maker takes about a minute a cup. So this is probably a couple minutes faster than like a standard percolator coffee maker. Now I do have a bun. Now th these are called speed brews. It can brew 10 cups of coffee in four minutes. So they're a little faster. It's got the, it's got the hot, it's got a reservoir full of water that's hot all the time, ready to go. So it doesn't have to heat it up. It just, as soon as you put the water in, it starts brewing. So this coffee maker does not have a, a water reservoir on the inside. It's just gonna, it's got a pump. And when you start the brew, it's gonna take the water from the reservoir, this water reservoir, and heat it and then send it up through the brew head. So when this coffee maker is off, it's off at night. It's not keeping anything warm or nothing. So when this is done brewing, the display is gonna change and it's gonna say fresh and it's a countdown timer. Sometimes coffee makers have a count up timer. It tells you how old the coffee is. This has a, a countdown timer. So it's gonna display 60 
and it's going to count down from that. So 60 minutes. So you're going to have to do a little bit of math to say, okay, if it shows 30, it's going to say, so you know that, okay, it's, it's been there for 30 minutes. So according to them, a coffee pot is fresh for up to an hour of sitting here. And that's why it's got the 60 minute countdown timer. So it does beep at you three beeps. They're kind of loud, not super loud. And here's where the display now says fresh and it's a countdown timer from 60. So it did take, so we're not quite up. We're, we're at the nine cup mark. There's a little bit dripping out of there still. And we're right at the eight minute mark. Well, about the nine minute mark, so. Okay, so let's get our coffee out. Let's see how it tastes. And what kind of, so this coffee maker pours a little bit different. Now I should have I should have went to drip stop because I, I did get a few drips on my uh, burner because I didn't go to the drip stop. So next time I pull, even though it's done, it's still going to drip a little bit. Next time I'm going to pull, I'm going to go to drip stop and then pull my coffee maker out. That'll prevent it from dripping like it did. Then put it back in and go to coffee. But that one thing I don't, so by doing that, it does away with your fresh timer. I wish I wish that didn't happen because you're gonna definitely not want it to drip, but it does away with your fresh timer. Okay, so the coffee is about 160, 165. Cooled off just a little bit. It was about 165. Yeah. And how does it taste? Now again, this is pretty strong coffee to me. You know, it tastes pretty good, but it is pretty strong. So let's see how the filter basket did. Okay, so it did really well. Now, by using that much coffee, you can see it went pretty high up in the, but it didn't overflow. That's a good sign. Um, I don't like to use that many coffee grounds. Like I said, I would use 10 tablespoons. And you can vary that accordingly. You know, if, if you thought, if you use 10 tablespoons and you did a full pot and you're like, well... That was just a little bit weak to me. Add 11. You can go up to 12. As you can see, you can go all the way up to 16 tablespoons. And it'll handle it just fine. So the coffee grounds looks like they've all been... They're all nice and saturated. Got a good brew. So let's go over cleanup. It's got these little ears, the filter basket. So it, And it won't drip on you when you take this over to your um, trash can. So, and then it's easy to kind of just dump it out. And that's why I like using the uh, coffee filter, the paper filter. So let's go over cleanup, the coffee pot. All of these things are dishwasher safe. Um, this one's a little tricky to put in the dishwasher just because it's got a small opening. But they're very easy to clean. I don't know that I would put the water. It says it's dishwasher safe, but I have found that that kind of clear plastic can sometimes warp. So I have not put mine in the dishwasher, but I, I, this I put in the dishwasher and this and this. And these are all really simple, really easy to clean. So that brew I did on the gold. Now you can brew your coffee bold, so it takes a little bit longer to brew it. And you can brew it light. That's a little bit quicker of a brew. And then again, you can brew it over ice. Now ice is like a gold brew, except the temperature is... Um, well, actually, you can you select ice, and then you can select light, gold, or brew. They recommend when you do ice to do a bold brew. And again, ice, um, it comes out about 150 degrees. So it's about 20 degrees cooler. It's still pretty hot, so you're going to have to use a lot of ice whenever you brew an iced coffee. So now let's talk about travel mugs. So let's take the coffee pot out. And let's just do travel mugs first. So it is pretty tall. This travel mug is seven inches and it fits in there just fine. I could probably go up to almost an eight inch, almost an eight inch travel mug. And that's going to be the limit. And then let's put the cup shelf down. So here's just a standard coffee uh, mug so with the cup shelf down you got about oh, 
maybe five and a half inches, maybe five and a half inches. So there's that scoop I was telling you about. I don't have that scoop, so I've been kind of having to do some math. They want you to use, it's got a big side and a small side. And the big side is 8.2 grams. And I looked up online, a tablespoon is five grams. So that's why I had to put more tablespoons in, even though it's saying you just use 10 of the big scoop. Now that scoop is nice because when you get into these smaller drink sizes, these are ounces, and it just tells you, so for the five ounce, you use one big scoop. For the eight ounce, you use two smalls. So I'm gonna have to do some math, but um, if you have the scoop, it makes it really, really easy. So again, I, I just did some quick math. This is what it shows you. So a five ounce, one big, I did the math and converted it. So with Folgers, it says one tablespoon for six ounces of serving. So using that formula, because that, that seems to taste a little better to me. So a five ounce would be one big scoop, with, which would equate to five, uh, 1.5 tablespoons if you use their ratio, but that's pretty, pretty strong. If you use Folgers ratio, it would just be one tablespoon. And for the eight ounce setting, and again, the eight ounce setting is right there. For the eight ounce setting, um, Braun says to use two small, which would be three tablespoons. Folgers, that's about 1.5 tablespoons. The 12 ounce, three smalls, which is four tablespoons, according to their ratio, which Folgers, which would be about two tablespoons. 16 ounces, four small, 4.5 tablespoons to keep their strength, about three tablespoons using Folgers. 20 ounce, four big, 6.5 tablespoons. That's pretty strong. Four tablespoons for Folgers. And same with the pot. So a half a pot, eight tablespoons to keep it the strength that they want. Braun wants. Folgers, about five tablespoons. And a full pot, 10 big scoops, which is 16 tablespoons. That's really, really strong. That's what we just did. 10 tablespoons is what Folger rec Folgers recommends. So if you need to pause the video, I'm gonna leave that there for just a minute. So next, I'm gonna brew an eight ounce cup of coffee. That's about an eight ounce. Uh, that's a pretty big mug and that eight ounces, it holds really well. So let's do an eight ounce. So I'm gonna use my uh, Folgers and we're gonna do for an eight ounce, we're gonna do a one and a half tablespoons. Okay, so I've got my, fil I got my filter in, I got my coffee grounds in. Again, I used one and a half tablespoons. You can play around with this. You can add, if it's a little weak, put two tablespoons in. And you'll kind of get used to what you like. And that that um, scoop they gave give you may taste great to you. So then you can just use the scoop. But here's eight ounces. Got my coffee in. Got my water in. I just filled the water reservoir up there. It's only going to use eight ounces of water. So let's go over here. Let's turn it on. And here... Even though I've got this selected on a coffee cup, I can still do a light brew. I can even do over ice. I can do a gold brew or a bold brew. Let's do the gold. And once I press that, it's gonna start brewing. Okay, within a matter of about 20 seconds, it starts brewing. Okay, so there in a couple minutes, you do have a cup of coffee. Now, it does drip for a little bit, so you're probably gonna to wanna to put this to the drip stop. And it, even when you do the cup, it does beep at you when it's done. But again, I still recommend putting this to the drip stop. Get in your cup. And there you have a cup of coffee. You know, even it's brewed. About 155. Yeah, that's a pretty good cup of coffee. Not quite as hot as the coffee pot. Now you'll notice it didn't turn the burner on the power lights flashing because I've got this in the drip stop. So when I put that back to coffee, it turned it back on. But the burner's not on down here because that light's not on. Let's see how it did. So it did really well with the coffee grounds. Okay, so we've done coffee. Let's do a hot water. So in order to do hot water, you do have to move this lever because when I turn this on, if the lever's in coffee, it activates the coffee uh, features. But when I move the lever, 
you'll see that it switches over to the water temperature. I'm going to put my cup underneath here. And again, it's going to come out a different area, so you're not going to get any coffee taste. Okay, so if you'll notice, when the water is activated, it comes up with the degrees. Now, I can change the temperature I want my water to, to be dispensed at. And I can go all the way to 75. And if I look, they have a chart here. So it starts out at 70, which is 158. And go to 75, 80 degrees Celsius, 85, 90. I go all the way up to 95 degrees Celsius, which is 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, my display is a little broke. So when I start to go up, it looks, see, it looks like it's 30. That's not 30, that's 80, 85. No, that's 95. So when that says 35, that's actually 95. So that's 90, 85, 80, 75, 70. So you can pick what temperature you want um, the water to be dispensed at. So let's pick 75. 75 is 167 degrees. So now I've got my temperature selected. All I do is I hit the water, but I gotta make sure I just want eight ounces of hot water. So then just hit the water button. And then it almost starts coming out immediately. So it kind of comes out at this nice, um, it's not super fast, but it's not super slow. I'm not getting a bunch of splatters around, so it's a really nice um, steady stream of hot water coming out. And that's the port that the hot water, it's coming out a different port than the coffee. The coffee comes out to the one to the left. So even when the hot water is done, it beeps at you to let you know it's done. So there's my hot water. Let's see what temperature it's at. So 145, you know, water cools down so quick. You know, even though it said it brooded at 165, it's, it's cooled down pretty quick. But the nice thing, I don't see any coffee. It doesn't taste like coffee, and I don't see any residual coffee in there. So that's gonna be a, just a clean cup of hot water for your tea or a soup. And after it's done brewing the hot water, it does shut down automatically. So again, I gotta move, I wanna do coffee now. I gotta move this over to coffee. And if I turn it on, see, so yeah, I'm gonna do, wanna do it over ice. I gotta press the over ice. And it's gonna just flash, that little blue light's gonna flash at you. But then you gotta select, you want over ice and you want, let's say gold. So you press gold. Then it's gonna start brewing over ice. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna show you real quick how to set the time. So turn the coffee maker on, hold the clock button. When the hour starts flashing, then you can select the time. It's got an AM and a PM, which is really nice. Hit the clock button one more time, and it flashes over to the minutes. Let it sit, or hit the clock button one more time, and it memorizes it. That's how you set the time. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to program this to start at 5 o'clock in the morning. So first, we've got, a, we've got the time set. Now I've got to set the program time first. So I'm going to hold this auto on button until it starts flashing. Oh, i got to turn it on first. Turn the coffee maker on. Press and hold this until it starts flashing. So this now is my time that I want it to start. I want it to start at 5. Oh my God, set the hours and then hit the auto on button again. So let's do... five then hit that auto on button that goes over to the minutes let's do five 15. so now then hit the auto on button again one more time that's the time it's going to start in the morning it's going to revert back to normal time now let's say i want to now i want to get it's still not going to come on at 5 15 a.m in the morning i gotta do one more thing i gotta hit the auto on button one more time then i gotta select what brew i want Let's say I want a light brew. So now here's where it gets a little confusing. So it's going to sit here and the auto on light is on now. The light is flashing and the power button. If I let it sit here, it's going to turn the power off and that'll stop flashing. But if I want to, so I can also just turn the power off. If I turn the power off, it's still going to start because the auto on is on. 
So now when it when it turns on at 5:15 in the morning, it's going to do a light brew, and it has to it has to be in the coffee uh, dispenser. You can't do hot water, and it can't be in drip stop. So it, this lever has to be in coffee, and it's going to start brewing that coffee at 5:15 in the morning. Now, if I want to check what time. When I press the button, it shows me the display. And again, I'm going to press what, what um, type of brew I want. And again, I can just leave it at this point. The auto on is on. That light is on steady. This is flashing and the power is on. But again, if I wait about a minute and a half, two minutes, this will go out and this will go out, but this will remain on. That means my coffee maker is going to start in the morning. Make sure you've got your enough water in and you've got your coffee grounds in and you'll have a nice... And again, you can slit it for a half a pot, full pot, whatever you want. That's what it's going to brew at 5.15 in the morning. And again, make sure this lever is in coffee. Okay, so this coffee maker has an altitude setting. So there's a chart in here. It's called A1. A A1 is for 0 to 500 feet above elevation. A2 is for 500 to 1,000. A3 a4, A5, those are for really high altitudes. Okay, so in order to set those high altitude settings, you're going to turn the coffee maker on, and you're going to hold this set button. And it's going to display A1. I can go to A2, A3, 4, 5, or back to A1. I'm going to leave mine on A1. And then you just let it, and it'll memorize it. It'll stop flashing A1 and go back to the time. That means it's set for that altitude. Okay, there's also another feature, the hard waterness level. And we're going to hold the clean button for two seconds and we're going to set it to H1, H2. H1 is for soft, H2 is for normal, H3 is for really hard water. So again, we switch it on. We're going to hold the clean button. Mine's on H2. I have medium water. But if I had, if I want to change it, I'm going to hit the set button. H3 is for really hard water. H1 is for soft water. I'm going to put mine on H2. And then just hit the clean button and it memorizes it. So this video got a little long, but this is a very versatile coffee maker. It does have kind of a larger footprint. But I think it's a really nice coffee maker, and it does have that that, that SCA stamp of approval. Again, I'm gonna, my next video I'm going to do I'm going to do I'm going to brew one over ice. I'm going to show you how to descale. So if the clean light is on, I'm also going to do a comparison. I've got the um, Ninja coffee maker that looks a little bit like this and does kind of the same stuff that this one does, but it also has that SCA stamp of approval. And I'm going to do a comparison. I'm going to put these two side by side with the Ninja. And see how both of those do against each other. I hope this video helps. That's the intention of my videos. I just want to help those that get this video. Or I want to help those that, that get this coffee maker. If you've got any questions on this coffee maker. Leave them in the comments down below. I check my comments on a daily basis. and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Thanks everybody for watching. And if you could please like and subscribe.